Hi, this is David Shepard with uh, my vlog number four. Uh, it was asked in the Facebook group how these vlogs have actually affected my uh, gaming designing techniques, uh, or people in general wasn't really directed at me. Uh, so I guess I want to say the first thing is actually documenting the process that I'm going through is fairly new to me. Uh, so I feel a little bit like Penny in the Lost in Space film, except obviously a lot heavier and not anywhere near as attractive. So, uh, going from there, I want to talk a little bit about myself, why I'm in the competition, and what I hope to actually gain from it. Uh, first and foremost, what I want to accomplish is coming up with at least one good concept that will put me on a competitive level within the competition itself and maybe just maybe I might be able to get a couple ideas that will help me uh, kind of flesh out some smaller games because my biggest problem is I make games a little bit too big uh, so me is a history of a designer uh, I'd have to say I went back about seven years and really got into uh, board gaming. And from there I decided to shift some of my uh, free time as well as uh, creative energies towards making uh, board game designs. Because previously I had joined uh, various uh, groups of people who wanted to make video games and either through my fault or through the faults of other people and eventually all of those efforts would just implode. Uh, so I got into game design primarily because if something did not get done, something did not get finished, it was 100% on me. And I have a lot of games that did not get finished, so those are actually 100% on me. Uh, talking about my games for a moment, I believe I'm at about 45 uh, concepts that have been brought at least to a play testable form. Uh, I have various Word documents that put me well above uh, 60, possibly even 70 concepts. Of those, I would say about half of them were uh, had a little bit of a kernel of uh, hope within them, uh, just to start out. And of those, maybe about 15 are to the point to where I feel comfortable pitching them to a publisher. But, as far as my uh, career as a game designer itself, well, I'm going to start with uh, possibly the first game that got agreed to be published, and then I'm not even sure that the publisher is around there anymore. They're not answering emails. Uh, but, Haiku. Haiku was a very simple party style game where you had a set number of cards that had different syllable uh, values and then the pull point is kind of like a party game apples to apples. You put uh, cards together with various uh, syllables, make the best haiku you can. Had several game modes in there, uh, was definitely one of the first ones that people actually picked up and strongly considered for publishing, but it's Haiku is currently in limbo. Um, moving on, there is perhaps one of my longest running and most looked at games by publishers is a trick-taking game called Imps vs. Puppies. Uh, I've been pushing this one and working on it for about six years now and essentially at this point I'm done. I've had two different publishers pick it up and later drop it. I have two publishers currently with copies out there that have quit returning emails and this one is basically one of those that anytime I look at and start to want to work on I'm like uh <laughs> can't do it anymore uh so I've also had um Inca Rush was requested by a publisher to pick up and possibly uh publish uh, they had recently sent me an email that they're no longer going to be publishing physical board games and wanted to make it a iOS slash mobile game. Uh, the funny story about this one is it was one of my contest entries for a game crafter game design competition in which you were supposed to do a map building game. Uh, this one worked out fairly well and about three weeks after uh, the competition was up, 
winner was announced. I didn't win. Oh well. Uh, a game called Relic Expedition hit up on Kickstarter. They have different types of uh, ways to be played. In fact, theirs is much more uh, aggressive towards other players, but there's no denying that you're traipsing through a jungle in South America to recover relics and racing against other people to accomplish this. So obviously this one is not one that I can even self-publish without a drastic retheme. And I've been thinking about retheming it for a while now. It's just a matter of finding the time and finding the right theme. Because uh, it's, the, it's not a game clone per se, but it's enough to where it would draw criticisms that I don't really want invited. But speaking on that, and speaking on a game design competition I actually did win, uh, the game design... Uh, the Game Crafter had a game design contest which was uh, based on making uh, arcade style gameplay uh, a central point of the game design and that's whenever I came up with Galaxy Dice. Galaxy Dice is actually a bit of a uh, dice rolling card claiming game where you're uh, claiming stages that allow you to fight a boss and eventually hopefully win the game uh, whenever you beat the dice you uh, sorry whenever you beat the boss you would unlock new more powerful dice that could be used to uh, roll further stages uh, my most successful game however came from a game design competition that was uh, marketed as making a micro game well, I made a micro game and I also wanted to test my abilities at uh, making watercolor uh, pictures or paintings. Because uh, I never really tried, so I wanted to at least give it a shot and see what happens. And I eventually came up with uh, Percival Thistlewood's Incredible Dungeoneering Dolls. Now, I didn't even make finalist in this game design competition, but... What I did do was um, it got noticed by J.T. Smith, who uh, runs the Game Crafter, who's a real good friend of mine and a very strong supporter of my design career. Uh, and he made me, well, he offered to allow me to become a part of the uh, Village in a Box um, Kickstarter, where I would be one of the other games that would get bundled in. And I definitely said, yeah, sure, why not? And through there, I had sold over uh, 300 copies of the game. Uh, now, I also had, uh, because the artwork was really good and I really enjoyed it, and what the hell, I haven't actually made any games with the tarot cards, I made them available in a small poker card, as well as the much larger tarot card edition. And as I said, I, I really like how the artwork turned out, especially as a first jab at uh, watercolors. Uh, so as a designer one of the first things I do is I start with theme and how I expect the game to actually work. Um, from those I try to figure out how the mechanics will fit into the actual theme but I have made a few uh, abstract games that I've pasted on themes to as well. Um, so in general, what I'm hoping to get out of this is maybe to get my uh, games a little bit more exposure, get my games into publishers' hands, uh, maybe find a publisher that won't take it in and decide later, mm, nah. Uh, so, I've also, well, I also have a few other games that are out there currently in the hands of publishers, but... Once again, it's filling into that trap of not returned emails, so I'm not really sure if they're either interested or they're just giving up on the concept of playing it all together. Uh, now, I don't actually pester the publishers sending emails every week. I typically just send an email once every three to six months, and then eventually I just give up. Like, okay, well, that's that's a prototype that's out there forever. Uh, as far as me as a designer, I typically hang around in the Game Crafter chat room. I go by the uh, online handle of either Sheppy or Sheppy Boy uh, throughout various forums and such. Um, and 
I do get a lot of positive feedback coming out of uh, the proto spiels as far as uh, my game designs are concerned. Uh, but as far as getting publishers to actually take a look at them, I've had very little luck in that regard. Uh, in fact, I even spent uh, one Origins going around going, I'd like to talk to you about uh, game design, possibly uh, can I get an email or something like that. And a lot of times I would get a little pat on the head like, oh, that's cute, he wants to be a game designer. Uh, so I'm not going to say that I been the most outgoing because almost every good story I have I have two bad ones so that's a little bit of me what I'm about and what I'm trying to get accomplished um, hopefully with the game design contest I may even get enough uh, little concepts I can throw together as cheap games to start out on Kickstarter uh, so who knows? Can't really tell which way or another how this will all pan out. Uh, I think I'm going to just keep on working on my game designs until something happens. If nothing else, my friends, my family, they enjoy them. Uh, as a game designer, I typically start out a little bit too complex. I plan far too much in advance. In fact, uh, with this design competition, with all of the... Uh, ones that I have pressed forward and talked about in public, they've been basically riffing off the top of my head. Well, this is a concept. Let's try this out. Uh, in fact, these are probably my most ugly prototypes since I did Villainy a long, long time ago. Uh, so this is a little bit of a change for me, except I used to have the experience of I couldn't get people to sit down and play test a game unless it looked at least some level of decent. And I've been able to get people to play test them in earlier stages. Uh, so that's always a positive so that can actually help me figure out if I'm even on the right track before I invest a large amount of time in. Because I'd honestly prefer to lose two hours on a prototype as compared to 40 to 50 hours getting the artwork together and thrown together and trying to make it look presentable. Uh, so, as I said, typically I'm front-loading uh, all my design before I even get to a play playable state, and that's been one of those things that uh, people tell me that I need to change. The other thing that I need to change, as you can probably tell by uh, this vlog by now, is I don't really have a lot of, um, I guess you would call it confidence. I don't really walk up to people going, hey, this is the greatest game ever. You need to sit down, you need to try it, you need to play test it. Help me out. Doesn't typically work. Uh, in fact, most times I'm sitting there watching the game be played and I'm thinking about everything that's going wrong and I'm trying to gauge uh, player interest level and stuff like that and I'm even trying to decide if I even like it. Uh, so by the end of it it's kind of mentally exhausting and I, oh, I almost apologize for having people play my games which is never really a good uh, good spot to uh, come at a publisher with you know you need a little bit more confidence you need you need to be the person who goes yeah i i totally rethemed monopoly and it's the greatest thing ever instead i'm like i made a new game and i don't know i i guess it's okay could you play any interest feedback so uh i guess i'm rambling on a little bit too long uh as you can probably tell, I have a fairly sizable game collection by the amount that's actually on frame. Um, so I'm constantly playing a lot of uh, new games, trying to figure out uh, like maybe where they're solving the problems that I'm getting trapped on, or so on and so forth. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm happy to report that I now have the... Uh, panda kit in-house so I can start playtesting that uh, other concept and the fourth one is going to be really weird let's see if I can actually pull it off because as of right now I have no clue how that one's gonna end up uh, so 
In conclusion, this is vlog number four. I'm hoping to do one of these a day all through the competition. And hopefully by the end of it, I'll have something uh, worthy to show. So I'll talk to you all later. Bye.